Welcome to Get Cooking in Cloud, where we share the best recipes to apply in your cloud kitchen. I'm Priyanka, and in today's episode, we'll share the recipe to plan for data recovery when production environment is on Google Cloud. In the last episode, we learned about Main Street Style that deployed their production environment on premises and set up a data recovery and backup on Google Cloud. We also learned that there are two scenarios involved when we talk about data recovery. It's the data backups and the database backups. Today, we will talk about Main Event Planning, who currently runs their infrastructure on Google Cloud, so the disaster recovery environment also runs on Google Cloud. First, let's talk about their data backup and recovery. They have a tiered storage pattern on Google Cloud with persistent disk attached to Compute Engine. And they migrate data to a low-cost tier like Nearline or Coreline storage since the requirement to access the backup data is very less likely. Now, let's talk about their database backups and recovery. They have one self-managed MySQL database deployed on Compute Engine, and they use Cloud Bigtable and BigQuery, which are managed databases. Managed databases are designed for scale. Bigtable provides regional replication, which provides higher availability than a single cluster, additional read throughputs, and a higher durability and resilience in case of zonal failures. They use BigQuery to archive data, which is a great cost-effective storage for long term, since the storage price drops to 50% if the data does not change for 90 days. Best part about using BigQuery is that it's replicated by default. But remember, that does not save you from data corruption, say, by erroneous updates. For more on dealing with data corruption, or if you're using any other managed Google Cloud databases like Cloud Spanner, Cloud Composer, or Data Store, there's a link in the description just for you. Now, let's talk about that one self-managed MySQL database that main event planning has deployed on Compute Engine. Here's how this works. They create a VPC network and create a custom image that's configured with the application service. As a part of the image, make sure the persistent disk is attached for the data being processed, create a snapshot from the attached persistent disk, and configure a startup script to create a persistent disk from the latest snapshot and mount the disk. Then create an instance template from the previously created image. Using this instance template, configure a regional managed instance group with a target size of 1. Make sure the health checks are configured at the managed instance groups. Configure internal load balancing using the regional managed instance group as well. Then configure a scheduled task to create regular snapshots of the persistent disk. Now, what happens in case of a disaster? Well, main event planning does not need to initiate any failover steps because they occur automatically. That is the best part of the default HA features available in Google Cloud. In the event a replacement database instance is needed, this configuration automatically brings up another database server of the correct version, attaches a persistent disk that has the latest backup and transaction log files, minimizes the need to reconfigure clients that communicate with the database server, ensures the same Google Cloud security controls, the IAM policies, and the firewall settings apply to the recovered database server. To learn more about these components, check out the previous episode on cold disaster recovery for applications on Google Cloud. Well, there you have it. If you have a production application deployed in Google Cloud and need to set up data recovery, then hopefully you've learned some strategies to apply in your specific scenario. That's all for today on Get Cooking in Cloud. Here's hoping you're whipping up your own DR strategy. Join us next time where we will share some more recipes on Google Cloud. If you like this video and would like to see more such content, then hit those like and subscribe buttons.